Hi there, I'm Ian Buckley and you are watching MakeUseOf.com. Today we will be using the Processing Java library to do some things with our webcam. Um, this is going to be a beginner tutorial and although Java can seem a little bit scary for beginners, everything here should be easy enough to follow. There are a few things you will need before you start this. Um, you will need to download the Processing IDE from Processing.org and you will also need a webcam which is attached to your computer. And what we will learn how to do today is some simple webcam manipulation like flipping it around, making it different colors, and we'll even make it follow the mouse around on the screen. But for now, download Processing, open it up, and let's get started. Before we get started, we need to import the video library. And to do that, you head up to the Sketch menu, go under Import Library, and select Video. If you don't have this here in your list, go up to Add Library, search for Video in the bar here, and install the video library from the Processing Foundation. As you can see, I already have it installed here. Once you've done that, we're ready to get started. Rather than you watch me type out every single line, I'm just going to go through it. Um, if you want the code without typing it out yourself, head to the Make Use Of website. There is an article that goes along with this video which takes you through it in text. Although I would advise typing it out yourself as that is the best way to learn how to code. So first things first, we need to import the processing video library. Now, um, you may not have need to, needed to do this step because under Sketch Import Library, if you do click video, it adds this import statement for you. So let's begin with the simplest way to get our webcam displaying. We're going to make a new capture called cam. Capture is just a data type used to turn your webcam into images that processing can read. And we're going to use the setup function and the draw function in order to do this. Now the setup function is only ever called once at the start of the sketch. This is where we say the size. We want our window to be 640 by 480 pixels. And this is also where we say exactly what capture cam is. So cam is a new capture. It wants this, means this sketch is going to be its parent, um, and we want it to be 640 by 480, so it matches our window size. Once we've told the sketch what cam is, we can tell cam to start. For the draw, this is what is called every single frame. So every frame, we say if the camera is available, please read data from the camera, and we want the data from the camera to be displayed as an image. So this image, cam, and we want it to be at 0, 0, so basically the top corner of our window. And to test this is working, if we press play, um, if you haven't already saved it, it'll probably ask you to save it at this point. And you may have to wait a moment, as processing sometimes takes a while to wake up the webcam, but once it has, you should see yourself in the webcam image. And there it is. Just like we asked it to do, it's taken our webcam image and it has put it at 0, 0 up here in the bottom corner and the image is the size of our window. Not a bad start. Now that we have our basic image, we can start manipulating it. So as I showed you at the start, this uh, image is going to be flipped. It's also going to be flipped upside down and colored and followed, but let's just start with working out how we can flip the image in half. So we actually need to do two things here. One is know how to flip our image in half and the other is how to know when the user has clicked. So let's start with the mouse click. We want to know when the user has clicked so we can tell the program to flip the image around. Luckily, processing makes this very easy. Just like void setup and void draw are things that are designed by processing to make the whole thing work, they have their own thing for making the mouse work too. So we simply type void mouse pressed, two brackets just like the other ones, and then two curly brackets. Make sure you have a small mouse and a big pressed with no space in between them. This is called camel casing, something you'll come across lots if you do more programming in the future. Um, and this is a fantastic thing because it means we don't have to do anything. All this means is every time you play the program and the window comes up, whenever someone clicks either mouse button in this window, it will interrupt whatever it's doing in draw and it will do whatever is in here. But what do we want to do in here? Well, we need to flip our image and we haven't worked out how to do that bit quite yet. As we said at the start, at 0, 0, we are putting the cam image, and that image is changing every frame when we read a new image from the webcam. Probably the easiest way to manipulate this would be to use the scale function. Now what this does is it takes the window we've made and it scales it. So a scale of 1 to 1 wouldn't change anything, but if I was to turn this into 0.5 and press play, and wait the few seconds it takes for the camera to wake up, you'll see that it's taken the image and it has squashed it. Uh, so on the x-axis, it is half the size that it used to be. So what happens if you put a minus number into the scaler? So by changing this value in scale to minus 1, this will scale the x-axis in the opposite direction, flipping our image. The problem is, I put this in, and I start started my script, and it doesn't work. 
Now the reason for this is before we were painting this cam image at 0, 0 every frame, but now this has been flipped around, meaning that at 0, 0, if we were to put the image in, it wouldn't actually make sense. What we need to do now is say, we want this to be the minus value of the width of our canvas. And if we run this again now, and wait for it to spool up, you will see that it will be working. And as you can see, we have a flipped image. So we know when the user is clicking the mouse, we know how to flip the image. How do we make it so that when they click the mouse, it will spool between the flipped and the unflipped image? Let's do that now. So just before we continue, let's take the image that we already had and place it on this line here and return this to zero. And the reason I'm doing this is so that we have the original image we had now and we also have our flipped image here. Now what we really want is some logic in here to tell which one we use. And we're going to use an if statement to do this. We're going to say if something, we want to do this, putting the curly braces around it. And we're also going to say else if something else, we want it to do this instead. Now we're going to get errors right now because we haven't said what we want in these if statements. And probably the easiest way to do this will just be by using a number. So we're going to make a new integer by going up to the top of our sketch and under capture cam, we're going to say int and I'm just going to call it switcher because we're going to use this number to switch between our parts. So what's the point in having a number called switcher? Well, we're going to make this number start off as zero. That means that when the program begins, switcher will be zero and we can make it so that if the value of switcher equals equals zero and equals equals is just a check for the computer to say check that switcher equals zero which is different to saying switcher does equal zero up here that's what the double zero is for open a curly brace here and put a closing curly brace under here to close off our if statement now we know that if switcher is zero show the image in its normal place now we want to say if the switcher equals one then show us the flipped image instead. Now we could just make both of these if statements, but let's make this one an else if statement. And this is just a good practice to get into. Also, wherever you have if and else statements, it's also good to have a final else, which doesn't need its own brackets, because this is just what happens if all of the things in these brackets don't happen. And all we're going to say for now is print line, which is a processing thing that will print to the console down here. And we're just going to say something went wrong. And this is just a good practice to get into. It means that if you're doing your code and something has gone wrong, it's a little way of giving yourself a note. So now that we have switcher equals zero to do this and switcher equals one to do this, how do we change the value of switcher? Well, that's what we do here in the mouse pressed. Changing that variable is quite simple. We just say switcher plus plus. This is shorthand to say take switcher and add one to it. So now when we run the program and wait for it to spool up, you will see that when the program begins, we get our normal image. And that is because switcher is zero and every frame we are checking if the value of switcher is zero. However, if I now click here, you will see that it flips because when I click the mouse, the value of switcher was incremented by one. And now it says else if switcher equals one, do the scale that we've already worked out. If I press it again, you'll see it's saying something went wrong once every frame because it's not one or zero. And so it is running our else statement. So maybe we should stop that happening. The simple way to stop getting that error message is to put a check in the mouse pressed as well. And this is the same as before. This is just another if statement. So we're gonna say if, switcher is greater than or equal to two and make our opening and closing braces, we're going to say switcher equals zero. Now again, this is a single zero, which is saying that switcher now will equal zero. It's not checking it. Whereas this is two things. This is a greater than or an equal, which will say if it is two or more, it will turn it into zero again. So this seems like a perfectly good way of checking whether we should flip back to zero. Uh, after all, once we've been through all of the numbers that we have assigned new and different shapes for our camera, we want to go back to the beginning. Uh, the problem with doing it this way is if we do add new things, so 
here, I've added an else if that says switcher equals equals two. It doesn't do anything yet, but it does mean that we'll have an extra option. Normal cam, flipped cam, this will probably be the upside down camera. The problem is, um, when we click the mouse and switcher becomes two, before it even leaves here, it will check if it's two and turn it back to zero. What we need is a way to turn it back to zero at the end, no matter how many new things that we add. And luckily we already have it. When we made this else statement, all it did was print something went wrong if the number switcher wasn't zero or one and now two. So whenever there isn't some code that corresponds with a switcher number, this else statement will run. So this would actually be a far better place to turn switcher back to zero. So instead of doing it down here in mouse pressed, I'm going to copy switcher equals zero and put it inside our else statement. Now we don't need this check at all. And so all that mouse press does is increment switcher, makes it one higher every time. And I'm gonna change this just to say switcher equals zero again. So let's go through this. If it equals zero, it will do this, one, this, two, this. If it doesn't equal any of those numbers, the else statement will run and it will turn switcher to zero again, meaning that the next time round we will get this image. And now if we run it, you will see this works much the same way as it did before. Although now there's a little freeze here because we have switcher equals two in a position that isn't doing anything. So let's add some more codes to flip that image upside down. So now that we have a system in place that allows us to add as many changes to our camera as we want, let's start making some more changes. So let's reuse some of the code that we had here. Under switcher equals equals one, we have these two lines which take our image and they flip it. I'm gonna press control C to copy it and I'm gonna put it in the switcher two else if statement between these two braces. Now, we already know that if we change the scale on the X axis to minus one, it will turn the image the other way around. And we also need to make the width minus in terms of the position so that it displays correctly. If we want to turn the image all the way around, we can do exactly the same thing by changing the second part of the scale to also minus one. But this means that we'll also want to change this to minus height. Now in processing width and height are automatic. It just means the width and the height of this window. So now that we've done this, if we press play and wait for it to spool up, we now have it so that it flips one way, it flips upside down, and then it flips back the right way around again. So we're not bad, we're doing pretty good, but let's do something a bit more interesting. Let's split the image up, let's add some colors. So you've probably worked out how we're gonna do the next part. We've been using the else if statements to add new code and we're gonna do exactly the same thing again. So under else if switcher equals equals two, we're gonna put another else if statement in. This time, if it equals three, we want to show four images. So instead of the one large image on the screen, we're gonna go for one, two, three, and four. And of course it's changing every time I click. Um, and we want to change those colors. We're going a little bit for that sort of like Andy Warhol style thing. So the way that we do that is actually relatively simple. I'm gonna paste all the code in and as always, I'll go through it line by line. So it looks like quite a lot, but it's actually just one bit of code doing the same kind of thing over and over again. So the first thing that we do is we change the tint. The tint takes the value that we already have. So it takes the camera image and it adds a color on top of it. In this case, it's an RGB color, two, five, six, zero, and zero. This is RGB values for red. Underneath, we have the image value. Now this is somewhat familiar because up to here, it is exactly the same as it is at the start. When we first do it, we want the uh, image to be the camera that we take every frame and we put it at zero, zero. This is doing exactly the same thing. It's putting it at zero, zero, but it's saying I want it to be half its width and half its height. Having seen these two lines, the rest of these lines should make sense to you. This one is exactly the same, except instead of it being red, it is blue. This one shows we want it to be half the width and half the height, but we want it to display at half the width of the window. This means that while this one will be in the top left, this one will start in the middle and will go to the right. Same with these. This one, the tint will be blue instead. I think I might have said this one was blue, that's green. Uh, this one will be blue instead. And this one is half the height, but at zero width. So this means that in our window here, it will be down in this bottom corner. And finally, we have one which is half the width, half the height, while it is scaled half the width, half the height, and that one will be down here in the corner. So if we are to now run this code and wait for the sketch to refresh, we can see this in action. So as before, we start with the normal webcam, we click to flip it, we click to flip it upside down, 
and we click again and as we see we have the red thing in the top corner here, the green thing in the top right corner, the blue thing and just for a bit of luck the purple thing. So now we're getting somewhere, we're really starting to change our images but let's go one step further and actually make it reactive and follow our mouse around. Before we go any further it's worth noting that we've made these wonderful colours but if we go back to our normal one by clicking our normal webcam is now purple, in fact all of them will be purple apart from these four colours. And that's because here we tell it to tint it purple and we never tell it to stop being purple. So the way we can get around that is by copying our tint here, control C, and going right up to the top of the draw. And before we do anything else in draw, I'm going to put this in here and tell it to tint 256, 256, 256, which basically just means white. Essentially that means that any tint that was there has now been cancelled. So to have the image follow our mouse around the screen, the first thing we'll want to do is make the image a little bit smaller so that it actually looks good when we move the mouse around, but we already know how to do that. We've just done it. So all we need to know now is where our mouse is on the screen. Luckily, processing makes that really easy for us. So we're going to make another else if statement. This time, if switcher equals four, we're going to do the same thing as before. Make an image using the camera every frame, and this time we're going to use the mouse X and mouse Y. Processing does this automatically and this just gives us the place on the screen where the mouse is in pixels. Then we're going to say we want the image to be half of its width and half of its height. And this should work. If we now reset it, we can see that we have a normal camera, the flipped camera, the upside down camera, the colourful camera, and now this camera which will follow the mouse. However, we're not quite done yet because if you do move the mouse, this happens. Which is very trippy and very cool, but probably not what we want. So there's a very, very simple way to fix that, which we'll do now. The simplest way to fix this problem is to come up to the top of the draw function and just enter background and then the zero in the brackets. Uh, this zero is exactly the same as saying zero, zero, zero. It's just shorthand for black. This means that at the start of every frame, it will be painted black and this will fix the problem that we have. And you can see this has fixed up the problem. So now we have our sketch working as intended. When you turn it on, you get a normal camera, and when the user clicks through, it will flip it, flip it upside down, change it some crazy colours, and then make it so their mouse can follow it around the screen. This is just a very basic introduction to the webcam stuff you can do with processing. It's incredibly powerful, and there are some fantastic tutorials out there. Um, I hope that you enjoyed this. If you would prefer to see this in text, this video goes along with an article on the Make Use Of website, which will be linked in the description. And if you're not already subscribed to our YouTube channel, please do. We have weekly tech tips, we have giveaways, we do reviews, and hopefully a lot more tutorials like this. But for now, thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.